Want to know what the market's doing in spring 2021? Stay tuned and we'll tell you all about it. Everybody, I'm Hal Cohn. And I'm Chris Cohn with Cohn Realty Group. If this happens to be your first time to our channel or you're revisiting for second, third, 100th time, please make sure you click that subscribe button and that little bell icon so that you're gonna be notified each and every time we release a new video about living, working, and playing in the amazing Roanoke Valley. That's right, it is so special here and we have folks constantly contacting us saying they wanna to move to or within Roanoke, Salem, Bonnetot, and surrounding counties. So if that's you, your friends, or your family, get in touch with us. We'd love to have a conversation, see if we can answer those questions and help you out. You can call us, text us, or email us, whatever is easiest. Get after it now. <laughs> So we're in 2021, the first quarter of 2021, and it has been a crazy ride so far. I'm sure you've seen it, and we've definitely seen it in our real estate business. Yeah, and it's been nationwide trend and also here in the Roanoke Valley as well. So um, actually, we're off location right now. We're not even filming in Roanoke because we're finally celebrating our anniversary, 14 years, right? Happy anniversary, baby. Got you on my... Mine. I was just fixing to calculate that myself. <laughs> yeah, that's 14 years this year in January, in January was our 14th year of being married. <laughs> our anniversary, we usually take a trip around that time, but we've been so busy, so blessed, so thankful to be helping so many clients. We just haven't had that opportunity. Right. But we did make it happen today, and the great thing is we've got a team in place that's able to take care of clients while we're out of town. We're still working a little bit. As you can see right now, because we're filming a video, yes. but we're still working a little bit and then they're taking care of our clients, uh, you know, feet on the ground, boots on the ground, taking care of them while we're um, out of Roanoke. We're actually over in the Chesapeake Bay area today. And it's beautiful. It really is. Virginia has so much to offer in the way of beaches, waterways, like what we're seeing right out of our deck here. It's the uh, Potomac River. No, this is the Rappahannock. Rappahannock. This is the Rappahannock? <laughs> yeah. Okay. And we're near the Potomac. Correct. And the history here in Virginia, we did a little history tour yesterday of James Monroe's um, birthplace. And that was exciting. But, but it's always great to visit these places in Virginia and beyond but then come back to the mountains that we call home in Roanoke. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So without further ado, we're going to dig in to the statistics and the information that you really need to know to make an informed decision about buying a home in the Roanoke Valley here in the first part of 2021. So we're bringing you this video today because we get this question a lot from YouTubers like you and clients calling from all over the country. They're wondering, hey, what does the market really look like in Roanoke? Is it similar to what I'm seeing in my area? And is it trending like the rest of the nation? So we wanna dig into those numbers and those trends that we're seeing, but kind of an overall picture is that we have pretty low inventory. That means not a lot of houses available for sale right now compared to years past. And also the prices are a little higher. They seem to keep going up each mm -hmm. year, the average um, home price. And also the days that the house is active on the market seems to be shorter and shorter. So we'll dig into those trends a little bit more on this video. Am I missing anything? Let's dig into the stats. Learning statistics does not need to be difficult. So what, one of the things that I found very interesting as I was digging into the numbers today was the fact that from 2019 to 2021, we have seen a huge shift in how the market's playing out. We're seeing that nationwide, but we're especially seeing that here in Roanoke. And what was especially intriguing to me is the fact that this time last year in 2020, we had 1,500 houses that were active and available for sale. Wow. They were on the market, okay. people to look at. And in March of 2021, that declined significantly down to a whopping 573. Wow. So one third of the <laughs> amount of houses are on the market compared to this time last year. And we were kind of seeing the same thing in 2019 as well. Uh, so if you go back two more years, so if you go 21, 20, 19, is that two mm -hmm. years, three years, depending on how you do your calculations. Um, you know, we had a four month supply of inventory in 2019. Then 2020, we had three months supply, which is still more indicative of a seller's market. Right. And now in 2021, one month supply. So what does one month supply mean if you're not familiar with that term? Uh, that means that basically the number of buyers that we have on the market 
and the number of houses are almost identical. Well, what you can do is if you look at it, so, so let's say that the number of units that are selling each month are, are is around 570 homes. Okay. So therefore, if we sell 570, that means we got a month's supply of homes on the market. Wow. Whereas in the past, if you had 1,500 homes, you're averaging 500 homes that are being sold that month, then that's going to be your three month supply. Yeah. Okay. I get it. That makes sense. So yeah, there's, so just to boil it down. It's really high demand for homes, and we don't have enough available. Correct, there you go, Big. ding, ding, ding. <laughs> Ooh, what about winner, winner, chicken dinner? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Big seller's market right now, so if you're thinking about selling, right now is a great time. If you're thinking about buying, don't get discouraged. It may take a little longer. We'll have some tips at the end that can help you navigate this kind of seller's market. All right, so, so we gave you a little bit of intel there on the actual number of houses for sale, the supply as we like to call it. And now let's talk about days on market and how that's trended in a um, more positive direction as far as houses are not staying on the market very long at all. So if you want to look at 2019, average days on market was 126 days, okay. which is over what's that four months mm -hmm. uh at, whereas in 2020 the average days on market was 94 days so about three months and then now average days on market is 46. wow so <laughs> that means they're not staying on the market very long no and what we're seeing really what we're um, cautioning our clients and is that if it's priced well and it's in a great location sometimes that house can go that day mm -hmm. that it's listed and we're seeing people really clamoring for homes that are newly listed and some homes that have sat on the market two or three days in the past if we were showing a home that had been on the market for 14 days we really wouldn't think anything of it mm -mm, huh. now if it's been <laughs> on the market for six days much less 14 we're thinking what's wrong with this house mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> so even though the average uh, time on market is 46 days. I would say that if it's priced well and in a good location, we're seeing it go much, much faster. Yeah, and, and so and one of the things that people are doing because of the fact that there's decreased supply, there's not as many to choose from, is they are more willing from a buyer perspective to compromise a little bit to right. make sure that they're able to actually get a home because they're like, I want a new house. Yes. So from the seller perspective, you know, we always go through a methodical strategic plan with you to make sure you're going to maximize your profit. But there are instances now where so, there are some things you might be able to get away with not improving upon to still get a good offer on your home really quickly. Right. And so if you're a client looking in this market, we'd love to answer questions for you and help you through that. But it boils down to this. If you see a house that you like, you should get in and see it that day and not to create this false sense of urgency, mm -hmm. but things are going sometimes that day within a matter of hours sometimes. Yep. But agents sometimes will extend that deadline and say, we'll review all offers in two or three days. And that's helpful to get mm -hmm. a lot of showings in and for people to process whether they're ready to make an offer or not. And so again, we caution our clients, we just say, let's get in there, let's take a look, see if you wanna make an offer, and then put that offer in really strong. <laughs> and sometimes we're seeing a lot of offers. So a bidding war is not out of the question right now. We're seeing multiple offers. I think the other day, what was the record that you had? Oh, it was 19, I think. 19. 19. On a house, it was around $250,000. Right. So, you know, the, the sweet spot in Roanoke is at 150 to 250 price range. Mm -hmm. So, so with that, you know, there are going to, if the house was really nice, it was move-in ready, it had been well-maintained. So, they, people were clamoring for it. It was in Cave Springs, so it had lots of things going for it. So, the buyers were like, yes, I want to put in an offer, and I want to put in a really strong offer. Right. So we've talked about supply, we've talked about days on market, and now let's talk about the nitty gritty that most of you are probably uh, the most concerned about, which is going to be actual average sales price. Definitely. So, and it has continued to increase like it has throughout the country over the last couple of years from 2019 to 2021. So 2019, our average sales price was around $215,000. Last year in 2020, it was $242,000, okay. and it's gone up in March of 2021 to about $273,000. Okay. 
So if you look back on what I was telling you about with the $250,000 cave spring home that was a split four year, well maintained, that type of thing, that's why people were clamoring over it because there's not a whole lot around that 250 price point right now for people to actually call home. This was a four bedroom, two and a half bath house. So that's what you're looking at getting around 250 to 300 there. And you can find some that are cheaper. And Chris is gonna to talk to you about that for a second about some of the ones that are cheaper and why they might be cheaper. So one tool we like to use is called price per square foot. Now it's not really a scientific tool to tell you if you're getting an exact perfect value for your, your money. But, or you're getting a steal of a deal, you know? Right. But, but it kind of gives you a, uh, an idea of what the current market is seeing. And you may have a house that is like, it is nay, I'm not in the park. It is HGD, HGGG, HGTV <laughs> ready. And you're like, yes, I'm gonna pay more than average price per square foot. Right. So our average price per square foot right now is running approximately 130 per square foot. Now I say approximately because it's all over the board. We're seeing some in the upper 140s and then some as low as 85. I just ran one this morning for a client and it's priced at 85 per square foot. But the reason is, is because it needs a lot of updates. It's not that <clears throat> Stop that move-in ready, TV type thing. Yeah. yeah, it's not that glamorous, but that's okay. Because if you have vision and you have a little bit of money to put into it and make it your way, mm -hmm. then it's a really good value. But well, price, go ahead. No, I was gonna say, especially if you're looking at $85 a square foot versus the current market of at least $130 a square mm -hmm. foot, then that's a really good value as long as you're willing to put some sweat equity into it long term. If you don't have to have it moving ready, then those are the type of properties we want to help you look for. Mm -hmm, definitely. So it's been interesting to hear the projections and where things have gone in just the last two or three years. Uh, what do you think it's going to be like the next few months? Uh, well, interesting, you should ask. So, <laughs> I, you know, I did a little bit of digging before we got started on this video. And you know, what we've seen is tremendous increase in values, fewer days on the market. The great news is that there's still a projection for a 10% increase in price this year. And what that means is if you buy a house now, then guess what? You're gonna actually be able to see some equity as the year progresses versus losing money because you're like, ah, I'm, I'm overpaying, I'm overpaying, which a lot of people are thinking right now. But that's really not the case. In a projection of 10% increase in price, so if you're waiting to sell, I mean, you might squeeze another 10% out, but I wouldn't recommend waiting because inventory is still low. Tons of people are looking for looking mm -hmm. for properties. Whereas on the buyer side, take some, um, take some solace in the fact that guess what? You're gonna have some appreciation this year is what the market is telling us. Right. Uh, so, and another interesting thing that I saw this morning was the fact that the number of units sold in March of 2021 was 564 houses. Okay. And traditionally, we don't see those over 500 numbers until like May or June normally. So we're in March looking at the numbers and the units sold is 564. Like I said, that's higher than what we normally see at that time of year. So May, June, July, August, September, in October are normally the, are the months of the year that we see over 500, even in the 600 uh, number of units sold for those particular months. So it looks like it's gonna be a pretty wild ride yes. for 2021 as far as the number of homes that are sold. I'm confident we'll hit a new milestone there by the end of the year. And then also it looks like you're gonna be hitting the higher number of sold units per month earlier in the season than we traditionally see, which is <laughs> usually starting in May. So I've given you all those statistics. Now, don't let it overwhelm you. We've got your back. I actually give you a few tips to help your offer stand out and help you get into the home that you love in the Roanoke Valley. Definitely. We coach our clients on this a lot. And there's a few things you can set yourself apart from others, especially in those like 20 offer situations. Yes, absolutely. Really wild. But here's some tips for you. And we have more if you have questions. We'd love to talk through those with you. The first thing you can do is look in places and price points that you may not have previously considered. So if you can expand your search a little bit more and maybe not be in the heart of the community that you were looking at, if you wanna venture out a little bit more, if you don't mind that commute, 
or just look in another area that you hadn't considered before, that will help a lot. And then price point, especially if you're looking, if you have that vision, or if you know somebody that does and you have a little bit of money to put in for renovations, that's an excellent way too. Yeah. And remember, you don't have to do those renovations all at once. Right? No, it's uh, you, when you're looking at the house, you're like, okay, what is a must do? Is there anything that I absolutely have to do? Maybe to be able to live in this house for it to be inhabitable for me. I mean, a lot of times it's more preference than it is actual need. So, right. so make sure you're talking through that with your realtor mm -hmm. when you're looking at these properties so that you can make sure you find one that's a good value to you and puts you where you want to be or at least close to where you want to be. Yeah, I mean, we still have projects in our house we haven't completed, but <laughs> after four years. Yes, we do. But I think about things like wallpaper, changing out flooring. So those things you could you could actually plan out and save up for over mm -hmm. the next three, five, ten years. But it's a matter of preference. Yeah, and then this, the, a second tip we'd like to, to recommend is you know, consider how you're going to finance a property. Are you even going to have to have financing? So do you have cash? If you can mm -hmm. play cash, a lot of times that will differentiate your offer over, over others because you can alleviate the appraisal clause pretty easily. Uh, you know, and then the other, when you're talking about an actual loan though, so you've got cash, then you've got loan types, you've got conventional, you've got, and then you've got these government type backed loans as well. So for the most part, most sellers and most realtors are going to lean towards cash and the conventional loans when they're looking at actually choosing your offer when you put it in. So, you know, if you can have one of those two, that's ideal. But then also government loans, depending upon how much traffic they've had, um, how many offers they've got, then, you know, FHA, VA, VHDA, all these other loan types are still acceptable, but you may want to tweak your terms of the contract as far as closing date, closing costs, all that stuff to be able to help the seller see that your offer is going to stand apart. Yeah, and that was my tip number three, is oh. those terms and conditions. <sighs> Sorry. It's not, no, you <laughs> explained it perfectly. But it's not always about price. Sometimes a seller is motivated more by getting out of the property immediately, mm -hmm. or maybe they need two or three months before they can close on the property. So if you're flexible on that mm -hmm. front, it really helps out. Yeah, and we've got some tips and tricks on top of these that we can share with you when you sign up to be clients with us. So give me a little bit of an overview. I mean, we've gotten all the numbers taken care of. I know it's a little bit more pricey and it could be harder to find a property, but what's the good news? Don't let that deter you. We still have a great market for you to find a home in Roanoke. So don't let those stats scare you because traditionally you've seen other videos of ours that tell you our cost of living in Roanoke is way lower than most of the United States. So we've still got an advantage there. Even though our housing prices are going up, everybody else in the country, guess what? Their housing prices are going up as well. If it's a desirable area to live, then guess what? Their houses are appreciating as well and at, a, at, a, at the same rate, if not even higher rate than ours. So you're still gonna have a lower housing index as far as what you're paying and based on what you're actually getting in Roanoke. So don't be scared. We still have affordable homes. They're gonna be more affordable than anywhere else in the United States that you're probably looking at. Wow, great news. Yes. Let's go dig into some numbers some more. Let's go. <laughs>